What's going on everybody, King of Dragons 5000 here, coming at you with another figure review. Today we'll be having a look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Batgirl from Batman, The Three Jokers. And so here we have The Three Jokers Batgirl pose and out of the packaging. Before we take a look at the figure, let's actually run through her accessories really fast. Batgirl does come with a battering, which does fit in either of her hands, and then she does come with her grapple gun. Her final accessory is the typical McFarlane display stand, which we've seen with all the other figures. So with that out of the way guys, let's actually take a closer look at Batgirl. And so here we have a closer look at Batgirl, and I think McFarlane has done a very good job with this figure. Now, this is a Batgirl costume that I've been wanting since McFarlane got the license. It's more of a classic feeling Batgirl. I know it's not a 100% classic, but this is the suit I imagine when I picture Batgirl. We do have the bat cowl, which looks really nice. You can see some really good detailing in it, especially right here at the eyebrows. We have the temple right there, which is very nicely detailed on both sides. Unlike all the other bat, bat cowls, she doesn't have the cheeks on hers. They actually just come down and around the chin, which is pretty normal. Although it is a little bit hard to tell, they did sculpt her ears there, which is really nice. And unlike all the other bat characters, she does have hair, her hair poking through the bottom of the cowl, which is very nice. I do like the color on it. It's a very nice shade of red and works perfectly for Barbara Gordon. Just absolutely very nice Batgirl here and I especially love the eye color there this really nice green even though I'm not fond of her looking off to the side I do understand why some people don't like it others do it does give the character some personality as you can see I really do like that so Moving on to the rest of her costume, you can see she does have a cape, which isn't like all the other Bat characters. I'm pretty sure it just wraps around, and it's very nice. It is dual colored, so we do have yellow on the inside, black on the outside, and it has the same scallops right here that we see on Batman's cape. Although I kind of feel like they should have just made it a cape like Batman's where it just drapes down. This is windswept and it's a little bit strange because it's sweeping off to one side and then her hair is blowing back. It's a little inconsistent. They should have just had it going either all one direction or just have everything lying flat. I think that would have been the best way to look at this figure. So. Having a look at her torso, she is an amalgamation of the Art of Crime Batgirl, which we've already had a look at, and new parts. Now, she does share parts, especially at the legs, but let's actually look at the figure first. She does have her own unique torso, which I really do like that. You can see the musculature sculpted in here. You can even see where the plastic band was wrapped around the figure for a little bit too long, which that's why that is there. You can get rid of that with some heat, which I'm probably going to do after this review really do like this yellow bat emblem if there's one thing batgirl is known for it's a yellow bat insignia and they did a very good job here even though it does have to go over her chest it still keeps that form of the bat so really do like that her shoulders are a complete reuse of the art of crime batgirl you can see they have the bat emblem sculpted in them which we saw on the Art of Crime Batgirl. The biceps, I'm not 100% sure if this is a new part to go with her forearm or if it's reused from the Art of Crime Batgirl. I really can't tell. They look similar, but the cut seems a little bit off. It might just be figure to figure, but yeah, the biceps could be new. They could be old. I honestly can't tell. One thing that is new are her gloves right here, which are sculpted very nice. You can see just how nice they are with the yellows looking very awesome here. And it is very different from the Art of Crime Batgirl that did have the bat emblem kind of cut out into it, as you can see right here. Uh, looking at it, maybe the biceps might be a little bit thinner on the new one, but we'll, we'll see you with more comparisons. Same hands, which, although hers seem like they're cast in plastic rather than painted, so I do like that. And then of course she does get her own unique crotch piece with a brand new utility belt, so I do like that. Now, one thing I didn't like about the Art of Crime Batgirl were her incredibly long legs, and they reuse from the hips all the way down to her ankles. As you can see, I'm going to bring out the Art of Crime Batgirl here. It's all reused from the hip 
down to the ankles, which is a little bit unfortunate because the the Art of Crime Batgirl had very, very long legs and this one has that same issue. You can even see where the painted parts are supposed to be right here. They're sculpted. She has panel lining on her legs where the rest of the costume with the exception of the shoulders doesn't have panel lining so yeah it does throw off the look a little bit because we have panel lining here on the leg but then nothing up here on the torso they really should have just given us a brand new figure rather than just retooling and repurposing the art of crime bad girl legs because i think that's one flaw in this figure although the boots still look very nice they could have easily just sculpted brand new boots because again panel lining on this figure is a little bit off because the costume doesn't have panel lining anywhere on the torso we have some on the shoulders but not anywhere else so yeah that's one thing if i can gripe about it's a, the reuse of the art of crime bad girl but she does have brand new boots and thankfully they did sculpt panel lines on her boots that way it actually looks like the boots do go with the or the feet do go with the boots as you can see panel lining does bring everything together if they had made panel lines on her costume it would match this or if they had just made that smooth yeah that's probably my one and only gripe i do like the fact that she does have sculpted soles on her feet which look very nice you can see she still has the bat emblem on them and we can bring out the art of crime bat girl we still have those bat feet so yeah really really nice figure could have done with some new tooling and some new parts but overall still a very solid release by McFarlane so what we're gonna do now is compare Batgirl to other figures you may have in your collection here we have the three jokers Batgirl posed next to a Marvel Legends Cyclops and a DC Multiverse Superman here we have Batgirl posed next to a WWE Elite Scale figure and a Mezco 112 Collective Popeye the Sailor Man. Here we have Batgirl posed next to a Lightning Collection White Range and a Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian. And finally, here we do have the three Jokers Batgirl posed next to the Art of Crime Batgirl. So with the comparisons out of the way guys, let's actually have a look at Batgirl's articulation. Now she does have a ball joint in the head, which does let her look down. She would be able to look up higher if her hair and cape weren't as thick as they were. So yeah, it is a little bit limited. You can see she does tilt her head, but again, the hair is a little bit restrictive, which is unfortunate. It does turn left and right, thankfully, because there is enough clearance in the hair to turn. Ball joints in the shoulder does allow her to pivot forward and back down and up although it does want to fight me when going up so do be aware of that left arm no restriction on the cape as you can imagine the right shoulder definitely hindered by the cape but going out to the side no issues goes out to the side perfectly bicep swivel works fine double bend here at the elbow giving us much better than 90 degrees she does have rotation and hinge at the wrist, giving us an up and down hinge as well as an in and out hinge. And of course it does rotate on that pin. She does have a ball joint here at the torso, which does let her lean back. She can lean forward to the side, to the other side, as well as rotate. She has a second ball joint at the waist, which does allow her to lean back about that far. Leans forward about that far, pivots to the side really nicely we get some really nice lean there does rotate really good then legs do kick forward to about right there they kick back out to the side no problem thigh swivel uh, non-existent we do have double bend here at the knee swivel at that boot then we do have a hinge which does go forward and back we do have a front facing pin for a rocker ankle or we can pivot both joints to have a true rocker ankle and then finally she does have a very generous toe hinge so overall bad girl has some pretty good articulation some of it could be better but overall still works so with that out of the way guys let's actually get her pose for my final thoughts and then we'll wrap up this review and so here we have the McFarlane DC Multiverse 3 Jokers Batgirl pose for my final thoughts. And overall, I think McFarlane has done a decent job with this figure. I'm not going to say they did a perfect job like they did with Batman or the Clown. It's just a decent job. And if they had taken some time to retool new legs for this figure, I think it would be much better than it actually is. Especially if they give us a little bit shorter legs. That way it doesn't seem like her legs are twice the size of her torso which that's actually the case if you put 
this Batgirl next to the Art of Crime Batgirl and measure the legs. Her torso only comes up to the knee of the legs and that's kind of unsettling because I would like a figure in more proportion. If they're going to give us longer legs, they have to give us a bigger body and that would make Batgirl too big. So smaller legs for a more petite character would work so much better than what we have. Other than that, I can look over that because this is still a very solid release. The head sculpt is perfect, although the paint job is questionable. I'm not a fan of the side eyes on Batgirl, but it does give her some posing options, so I do like that. So overall, McFarlane did a decent job with this Batgirl. Now, if you are looking for the three Jokers Batgirl, she is starting to hit stores at the time I'm making this video. So check out your local Walmarts, Targets, Walgreens, or get her online like I did from Amazon, where she will run you about $19 with tax. So it comes out to about $22 even. So be on the lookout for Batgirl if you're a fan of the three Jokers line or just want a new Batgirl in your collection. With that being said guys, I'm King of Dragons 5000. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, go ahead and check out all my other action figure reviews as well as all my other DC Multiverse videos. Hopefully you find them informative. As always, if there's a figure you would like to see me review, let me know down in the comments and if it fits in my collection, I'll gladly have a look at it. While you're at it, check out my Instagram account for new and exciting action figure photos and as always, ring that bell to be notified every time I upload a video. Until next time guys. I'll see you later. Take care, everyone.